welcome to the Frame Faith Journal, and we're so glad you joined us. We're talking, I'm with Tony Jones. He's our music director at the church, and uh, we're talking about music in the anointing yep. and music in the local church, yeah. music to help the pastor. Absolutely. Um, you know, Tony, uh, I was saying uh, in the first episode, I led the music for 20 years, yes, and um, one thing that God said to me before I started leading music, and of course, then I found out, realized why he said this mm -hmm. to me. He said, don't listen to anything void of the anointing. And he's talking about music. Absolutely. Don't listen to any music void of the anointing. He said, or you'll ruin your spiritual ear to discern the anointing. Yeah. Now, I knew what he meant, and I'd like to explain that to people who may be watching, mm -hmm. is that you might like something, and if you're not careful, you'll think that that affection for a song is the anointing. Yep. And it's not the anointing. <laughs> oh boy. Just because it's your favorite flow, and this is another thing that people need to understand. Just because the name of Jesus is in it doesn't mean the anointing is on Absolutely. it. Because, you know, the anointing is on it when Jesus is pleased with it. Yep. when God is pleased with it. And so I want to talk a minute for anyone who's, and really it really goes for all Christians, but especially for music leaders, anybody on a worship team, is the consecration <sighs> of their own personal life of what they allow themselves to listen to. Because if you listen to r wrong music, worldly music, it, it might not even be it might not even be negative music right. in the sense you can, there's a lot of songs out there that are upbeat and they're pop and they're, they're a nice message, but they're not anointed. Absolutely. And if you spend your time listening to that, that's what's going to flow out of your spirit when mm -hmm. you're ministering. And yeah. talk to me about that. Has God dealt with you any about Absolutely. that? When, when I um, had the opportunity to travel with Brother Hagen, mm -hmm. that's when I really learned how important it was, what we we're singing. And then the most important thing is the lyric. Does the, uh -huh. the lyric have a uh, word base in it? Revelation. Revelation. Doctrine. Not just, <laughs> not Old Testament. <laughs> right, but right, the right, Pauline right. revelation of who we are now. Yeah. You know, does it apply to that? And what we used to do and what I still do is, I, you know, you get, get in the word. Does, can I find this song in the word? Because really it should bring it should bring help of the word to people. And this is this is a concern of mine. Listen. With with so much that's done today, there's so little doctrine. Oh yeah, and it's just I love him, he loves me. Well, that's that's the foundation of everything. But you have to have some knowledge to win in yeah. life. You have, you know, the word says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It doesn't say they're destroyed because nobody, I don't love them. Yeah. God loves them, but if they don't have knowledge, they don't know how to take their rights, their, their privileges in Christ, exercise their authority. And really songs are just repeating right. truth right. and doctrine so that at a time of difficulty, people can call that song back up that Absolutely. they heard Sunday well and, and use it for what they're facing and seeing their victory in the face of that thing. Yeah. And songs that really have the anointing on are songs that don't talk about your past. They're songs right. that talk about who you are in Christ, right. what belongs to you in Christ, what we can do because we're in Christ, and songs, of course, that bring Him glory, that focus on Him. Because we know this, some songs minister to God, some songs minister to the people. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and it needs to be mainly God, but it should also minister truth to the people. Yeah. Talk to me about that a yeah. minute. Songs, you know, one thing I had to realize were songs are avenues. They need to have doctrine. That's good. They need to have doctrine in them. Um, they, who you are in Christ. Who you are in Christ. Not, where what, we you are used, now. not what you used to be and yeah. where, how you used to be failing. And uh, Yeah, you know, it says over there that God's looking for true worshipers who worship Him in spirit and in truth. That Our means, past is not the truth. No, <laughs> no. And to be regurgitating that in a song of I was in sin. Now we understand we're, gra we're grateful for where God brought us. I'm not right. talking about that. Right. I'm talking about the focus of people's worship uh, bringing, dragging their it, past yeah, up. Yeah, it makes you remember all about the That's past right. and you right. have to live through all that again. Yeah. Yeah. And then we finally go, but God, and you know, <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. three and fourths of the song. Was really digging out the past. Yeah, uh -huh. and then sometimes people get stuck in that. But the thing about it is, okay, in the church service, the pastor can get it turned around. But when you go home and that's your favorite part of the song, that becomes your meditation. Yes. It, be, it gets yes. in you and that becomes your meditation. And sometimes if we give people songs that aren't scriptural, it becomes their doctrine. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very dangerous for someone to hold on to any bad doctrine 
And a lot of times songs carry, songs carry doctrine. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have uh, the right doctrine in it, mm -hmm. then they're not gonna, they're not gonna get results in their lives. No. It's not gonna help them renew their mind. Right. And then here they are stuck in a rut. I've, I've been there. I grew, I, I grew up, you know, stuck in a rut in my mind, not knowing the word as much. And, um, you know, I had to learn. It took me a while to get over some things that I just had stuck uh -huh, uh -huh. in my mind. And I thought, but we sang that all the time, you know, or yeah. I sang that all the time. And how many times dad, dad Hagen would get up <laughs> and he would take a, a chorus that was just sung line by line and, and un, undo it with, Un with the, with what the it. word said. And it is the pastor's not only right, but responsibility Absolutely. to correct that stuff. Instead of going, oh, well, the people like the song. You don't understand what you're putting in the spirits of the people. Yeah. You're, t you're training them in a wrong flow. Yeah, and, and this is kind of one of my pet peeves is the young people. The young people like that flow. Well, the young people are the most uh, uninformed <laughs> Thank group you. of you know they don't and have the, the revelation. least experience with the God. Least ex they don't have the skill. They they aren't experiencing the word mm -hmm. as much as many times uh, the older people, and so we can't just let them dictate the music and the all that direction, the flow of it, they the haven't flavor. Been experienced. <laughs> and the thing is, is that it. I believe that you know, can God give a young person a song? Absolutely, Absolutely. Yeah. but. The wealth of our songs should not be coming an, out of the young people Absolutely. because they haven't had the experience in the anointing. They mm -hmm. haven't had the experience of, of winning against tests and trials right. of that fight of faith. Right. And um, so I think that there's a mistake when people and churches or pastors just gear the flow of their music to bring in the young people because they're bringing them in on the wrong thing. They're bringing Absolutely. them in the wrong, and they're training them in the wrong flow. Right, and then it, it sometimes it can get the church off, you know. You, sure it you does. Can, it'll take a whole church, it'll, it'll take the take vision bill, off. Yeah, it'll take the vision off. It will and take the vision that's off. That's one thing us music directors and people in the music ministry, remember we can't touch the vision. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we have to come up under and follow and help push with, feeding what mm -hmm. is helping the pastor, mm -hmm. what is helping the vision. Our songs and the doctrine in them have to stay in that flow. It's so easy. It's so easy. Yeah. It takes one service for people to say, oh, I like that. And yeah. if you take that wrong instruction or hear from the, there's many voices, yeah. <laughs> especially, you know, and if you take that wrong voice and start feeding that and getting it off, you know, it's like you, you just get it off just a little bit and it just keeps on going, you know, yeah. and it, you have it, to watch it, it, out. Is, it is easy to get off, not only in word, mm -hmm. but in motive yeah. in a service. Now, I, uh -huh. I remember hearing Dad Hagen. I was telling the staff about this, that he was in a service and they were tell it was being televised and a guy got up and was singing. And it wasn't part of, you know, Dad right. Hagen's His, ministry. It mm -hmm. was some guest minister. And he got up and he was singing, you know, and it was impressive to the people. But listen, the thing that people need to know, when you're done, are they more impressed with you or Jesus? Oh, my. And that's a huge key for those who are singing or playing. Absolutely. Because some just want to play their favorite licks so that people can see, hear them Ooh, do their licks or dangerous. sing their riffs or hold their notes. So this, this one man had got up and he sang this high note and he just lived on that. He just, he just, he just camped on that note and it sounded great, but he was holding it for effect and for performance yeah. and not, not not to enhance the anointing. And I tell you, when Dad Hagen got up there, he straightened that thing out. Mm -hmm. And he basically said that performance of, that performing of a song just killed the anointing. Absolutely. And what he was saying is this is not about performance. We're not performing. And this no. is, talk to me about no. that. Because I know you have to work with the, <laughs> yeah. the people. I have to work in with myself and say, okay, why are you doing that? It's you know, a motive. The it's heart a, it's, behind it is so important. It's a motive, and only God gets the glory. And what I had to realize um, was, um, and I had great examples. Mm -hmm. You know, my father is precious a, man. Because your dad man. has, um, I don't know what he did in your local church. Now he's a, a, mm -hmm. a worship leader mm -hmm. in another church. Absolutely, done all it my for life. Years. Uh -huh. All my life. Mm -hmm. And if there's any man that I know who was not about the show. Yeah. But just give him, you know, my dad's always, he sends us reminders even now. Yeah. I'll get texts, you know, all glory to God. Make sure, you know, you're yeah. giving the focus is to God. Make sure you're worshiping from your heart on your instrument. 
and make sure you're not getting the people to look at you and, and mm -hmm. you know, gather attention and play a chord and look at that person in the in yeah. the congregation who's musical. That's so tempting. Oh yeah. Especially when you get when you develop your talent, develop your skill and your your plan. Sometimes you can even want to just look over and do something. I have to watch out about that. Sure. Now, certain people are going to enjoy it and understand what you're doing. And notice it. Others and won't notice, notice it. it. And yeah, others won't notice it. But I have to check myself and say, am I doing that because I want to be cool? Uh -huh. Or is this giving God, is this help? I've, I've noticed I had to back off on certain things that I do because I noticed, you know what? That's not helping the anointing. If it doesn't help, uh -huh. don't do it. Right. Sometimes I have to push at times yeah. in certain service because it is helping anointing, mm -hmm. but it's not because I'm trying to get attention or gain And there attention. it comes back to, we want the people impressed with Jesus. Absolutely. That's, that the, comes down to it. There's and a quote that you, that you said one time when I first moved here. You said, God's not impressed with talent. He's the giver of it. And I uh -huh. said, oh, <laughs> yeah. there we go. Yeah. You know, yeah. so nothing you're going to do is going to impress no. the Father. And and you have to get away from that. You have to get away from people wanting to, if I could say this, come into the front of the platform and giving people high fives while they sing. And you know what I'm saying? Because it can become a performance. All yeah. that will grieve the spirit. And our goal is to get the service to its highest flow. Absolutely. And um, there, there's so many. Yeah. And help them to operate at their full potential. Yeah. And... You know, Jesus told Dad Hagen, he says, I have a plan for every single yeah. service. That's what we're after. Mm -hmm. That's our priority. What's the plan and the will of God for this service? Absolutely. And if you keep that in your thoughts and in your heart and repeating that to your the music team a lot before you go. But yeah, before you go out, remember, it's about what does God want to do? Yeah. There's people out here hurting. Mm -hmm. There's people out here who need answers. And some of their lives are dependent on what's going to happen in that service. Absolutely. And so you cannot bring it down to that natural human level about do I do I not get to sing my special? I thought I was singing a special this morning. How come <laughs> I'm not singing? Oh, a special? And, you know, you have to teach people to guard against that. Absolutely. And I want to say it's the pastor's responsibility to protect against something like that. Yeah. That, you know, a pastor may not be the music director, but he's head over everything. He's authorized mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. step into any mm -hmm. music department, any song Absolutely. service and correct it. Uh, and if, you, if, and if he doesn't, he's probably not paying attention. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if uh, music directors get touchy about if your pastor can't come to you and say, hey, this is what I'm sensing. Yeah, don't do that you song can't get again. Yeah. yeah. You know, as soon as she says, don't do that song again, I'm not going to do it. Because I'm not going to care. Because I've texted you. Yeah. I've texted him <laughs> after he would, they were done with the music. And, you know, maybe while they were announcing or something, I'll say, Tony, that song's in the wrong key. Or Tony, that, yep. that song <laughs> didn't work. And he says, yes, ma'am, we won't do it again. Because, yeah. and I'm not trying to dog him. I'm just letting him know. The pastor has the final authority of anything that happens Absolutely. in that service. And if you're if you're being submitted to God, you're not going to care because your heart's going to be what does the pastor need? Yeah. And if the pastor is hesitant to do yeah. that, he's got the wrong people. See, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that, yeah. and it hurts the service. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, it's it, a pastor needs to know that his worship team is listening to him, mm -hmm. that he won't feel like he's ha he's stepping on toes, that they want his input. Mm -hmm. So sometimes pastors have to train him. Listen, you need my input because Absolutely. I'm the only one that can train you to help me in my anointing. Yeah. You have to ask yourself when yeah. you get a correction or, or instruction, what, what in me doesn't like that? Yeah. Now, why is that? Yeah. And it's called the flesh. You yeah. gotta... And it can be pride. I mean, Absolutely. and you know this, Satan fell with pride, but he was a music. He, he was. was. He was the head of the music. And uh, the devil loves to insert pride through the flow of music. Absolutely. Because it has such a, a role in the anointing, doesn't it? It well, does. We're going to talk about it some more. You don't want to miss more episodes of Defrain Faith Journal with Brother Tony Jones. <laughs> love, I love having you with me. Thanks for I love being, being here. here. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, they'll be blessed if they if they watch next yeah. time, won't they? <laughs> God bless you. We're glad you joined us. On the next DFJ. I tell you what, it's an honor to be on the church platform. Sometimes you can get in the musician circle and it's glorified. 
mm -hmm. to be able to go out and, and play yeah. the gig or do this yeah. do this certain gig. And I had to learn to keep my affections in the local church. When parents see these musical abilities in children, they better step up yep. and direct and hold them to their course because you can't leave an, a child that's growing to mm -hmm. make these kinds of decisions. Thank you for watching today's show. Be sure to check out all the latest episodes on our YouTube page. For more information, follow us on Facebook or visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. World Harvest Bible Training Center is an exciting place where you'll get trained in the Word and in the Spirit. If you're looking for a Bible school, this is the place for you. God had a business that we would start and we're in that business full time. And I would not be in this business full time right now running a very successful company if I didn't go back and do Bible school. Well, I can tell you that it's been the best thing for me, that my life has been uh, renovated, renewed, recharged. Holy Ghost really dealt with me strong about moving my family from Ohio to California. I didn't know all the ins and outs. I didn't know anything about a job, but I just knew I had to be here. And so for anybody out there, I'm telling you, you may not know all the steps, you may not know how and when, but if you just follow the Holy Ghost, I'm telling you, it's gonna change your life forever. I wanna recommend World Harvest Bible Training Center as a wonderful place to send your children. Uh, I chose to send my children here. I'm a pastor and my children grew up in the ministry. They've been taught the word, uh, but this school uh, has been such a blessing. My family is more united together on the same page than ever before. They came back with the same vision, not with a different vision. And so I highly recommend World Harvest Bible Training Center for your kids. World Harvest Bible Training Center is a full-time two-year Bible school, which includes an optional third-year internship program. Here, we emphasize the teaching of the Word along with the move of the Spirit. It's a catching school where the spirit of faith can be caught through impartations, revelations, and demonstrations. World Harvest Bible Training Center is a family that's flowing with the Word and the Spirit. Don't hesitate. Apply today. You can log on to our website at DeframeMinistries.org or give us a call at 951-696-9258. We look forward to hearing from you.